Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about the six famous leaders of both the Union and the Confederacy. Uh, the first one is Lincoln. He becomes the president right before the uh, Civil War and he is uh, opposed to slavery, which is why seven states got out of the Union and formed the Confederacy. He believed that the United States was one nation, not just a collection of states. This is kind of like what we think of the uh, United States today. We don't think of the United States as the United Countries of America, but back then, a lot of people did. They viewed their own state as their own country, and that we, the United States was a super country of countries. And I, I mentioned that quite a bit, but here in the Civil War, that changes. And that's because of Abraham Lincoln believing that we are one nation, and that the states are more of provinces, not individual countries. Um, he was determined to keep the Union together and wrote the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed every slave in the Confederacy, not in any other state, mind you. Now, northern states didn't have slaves, but the border states did, and it didn't touch those states. But he wrote he writes the Emancipation Proclamation. He's the one that comes up with it. And he also wrote the Gettysburg Address. This is a very famous speech that uh, he talks about the government of the people, by the people, and for the people, and we'll get more into that uh, in a later lesson. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant was a famous uh, Union general, and he's the guy that actually beats Robert E. Lee, not because he's a great tactician or anything, but because he understands that he has more men than the Confederacy, and he just keeps throwing in more and more men and keeps attacking, attacking, even though he loses and loses and loses. It's a classic example that he loses the battle, but he wins the war, and he grinds down Lee's army until Lee just can't fight anymore. They just don't have the endurance, they don't have the manpower uh, to keep up with the uh, incredible manpower of the uh, North. North has just many more people than the South, and that's how they're able to win. And it's because he, he figured that out. Frederick Douglass, um, is, we talked about him before, and uh, he becomes a, uh, a person that advocates for African Americans to become soldiers in the Union Army. Um, he believes, and rightly so, that the African American has more to fight for in this war than anybody else. It's, you know, they're, they're not thinking about states' rights. They're not thinking about union or anything like that. They're thinking about freeing the slaves. Okay, they, are, they have a better motivation than anybody else, and he thinks it's silly that to leave African Americans off on the side. Uh, but there's still racism. There's still people that don't believe that African Americans can or should fight in this war. Um, they, they don't respect their, their abilities, and you know, even one Confederate uh, politician says that, you know, if we, if the African American soldier uh, is a good soldier, then the whole idea of slavery is wrong because they don't believe that African Americans are, are regular people. They think they're they're less than. But if they can soldier, if they can fight, then you know they're they're just as good as anybody else. So they don't want the African Americans to fight. So he fights very hard to get African Americans to fight. And finally, when that happens. Uh, the African American soldiers are not treated well. They are they are disrespected, made fun of. Um, they uh, they're paid less than than their white counterparts. They're they're really discriminated against. Uh, but it's not until they see the the African American soldier in action, and again with that extra motivation, they fight very hard and distinguish themselves. If you ever get a chance to see the movie Glory, they do a great job of of illustrating this. All right, so let's get to the Confederacy and. We will talk first about Robert E. Lee, and one thing I want you to know is that the book puts Robert E. Lee as number one. Lincoln over here at the top. They got the President of the United States. He's the the man in charge, and then who did they pick for the Confederacy? The man in charge is Robert E. Lee. He's a military general. He's not the president. So they the South held him in much higher regard than their own president Jefferson Davis, and that's why he's on the bottom. Uh, but Lee was against secession. He uh, was offered command of the Union Army, but said, you know, if Virginia goes, I gotta go with Virginia. And that's what he did. So he led the Army of Northern Virginia. He renames the Army, the Army of Northern Virginia, to make them feel better about their situation. But as the war turns against the South, he, he uh, urges the politicians and people to accept defeat and reunite as Americans. Now this was a, a very important act uh, that should not be overlooked, because if he doesn't do this, then there would have been guerrilla warfare, there would have been people still murdering each other, and just it, were, it, it would have been even more of a mess than uh, it already was. So he, that is a, a great contribution that uh, he told people, just lay down your arms, go back home, you know, let's, let's just deal with it as best we can. And uh, that was a very un unheralded act that uh, I think is very, very important.
Uh, Thomas Stonewall Jackson was probably one of the greatest generals, if not the greatest general that, that uh, America has produced. Uh, he defeats the Union again and again and again. Um, he is probably the main reason why Lee was so successful. This guy right here uh, was, hit, you know, Lee called him his right hand, that he would go and uh, defeat the, uh, the Union Army and uh, allow Lee to be so successful. But he is uh, uh, accidentally killed by his own men. And uh, after his death in uh, 1863, the, the war starts turning against the Confederacy without his leadership. And then finally we get to Jefferson Davis. He is the Confederate president, of course. And at the end of the war, he tries to run away. They arrest him, but they, you know, he didn't really do anything wrong, so they, they let him go. And, uh, and that was it for Jefferson Davis. So it's important to uh, study these great men. They, uh, you know, they had to make decisions uh, based on what they thought was right. And so even if they made bad decisions or drawn the wrong side, you know, it's important to study them and see what, what drove them, what uh, motivated them, because we don't want to make the same mistakes as we did in the past, to back the wrong side or do things the wrong way. Uh, there's a right way of doing things and a wrong way of doing it. Even though you're right, you still can do it in a wrong way. So um, it is important to study history and find that there's always something that people do right and there's always something that people do wrong. All right, that's it for the, the men who led. Let me just review real quick. Uh, Lincoln opposed slavery, wanted to save the Union, wrote the Emancipation Proclamation and the Gettysburg Address. Grant beat uh, Robert E. Lee. Frederick Douglass wanted African-American troops. Uh, Robert E. Lee uh, was a famous general. He led the Army of Northern Virginia and wanted the people of the South to accept defeat when defeat was imminent. Stonewall Jackson was a great uh, general and Jefferson Davis was the Confederate president. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.